Good afternoon. Welcome to our continued study of the Gospel of Mark. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Uh, it's uh, titled, uh, the pericope is titled uh, in my study Bible, The Healing of a Demon-Possessed Man, but I like to call it Power Over the Devil. Uh, but before we get to that, let's uh, go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we uh, come to you. Uh, we open our hearts to you and uh, we ask that uh, you would be with us, that you would cleanse uh, our thoughts, our hearts through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, magnify your holy name. Lord, remember uh, all of your people throughout the world. Uh, continue to enrich them with your Holy Spirit and especially uh, the leaders of your church, Lord. And Lord, we uh, lift up to you the those in uh, political leadership uh, during this uh, time of preparations for elections, Lord. And we pray that, uh, that they would uh, seek out your justice, your mercy, your grace, and your wisdom. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would uh, be with those uh, of our fellowship who have ailments, uh, especially those who uh, have been diagnosed with COVID this last week. We've had several uh, members in our congregation and uh, we just ask that you would uh, be with them and, and continue to allow them to uh, have speedy recoveries from that. And Lord, we ask that you send your blessings on our homes uh, and our families, that you'd fill them with uh, your love and peace, that you send your healing mercies on our fellowship who are in trouble, have anxiety, sickness, grief, or any other types of need. And God, we ask that you help us to continue to work, to uh, relieve the oppressed, support the neglected, and we call to you all those who've erred and strayed from your ways. Uh, we lift up to you our joys. We thank you for those blessings in our lives, and we uh, petition your will for our concerns. All this we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, so uh, Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Uh, they went across the lake to the, recede, to the region of Gersarna. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with chains, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you will not torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. And the demons begged that Jesus send us <clears throat> among the pigs, allow us to go into them. So he gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out of the man and went into the pigs. And the herd was about 2,000 in number, then rushed down the steep bank into a lake where they drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported it to the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legions of demons sitting there dressed uh, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man. And then they told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family 
and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed. The word of God for us, the children of God. So, uh, today uh, we find a fragment of the gospel uh, that induces uh, maybe a smile if you think about uh, the imagination uh, of that herd of some 2,000 pigs running down a cliff and plunging into the Sea of Galilee. You know, it could be a, a, a kind of a, a funny image, if you would. Uh, but the truth is uh, that those herdsmen probably didn't find anything funny about what happened. Uh, they were probably very angry, and, and it, we see towards the end of that uh, pericope, they actually uh, begged Jesus to, to leave the area. Um, so today's gospel uh, episode really demonstrates Jesus' power over the devil or Satan. Um, in this uh, Gentile town, uh, one of the towns of the Decapolis, uh, they were ten great towns. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and they were uh, they were uh, east of the Jordan. Uh, in this particular town, um, I think the most common name for it is uh, Geraza, uh, was where this possessed man came out of the uh, tomb-filled, desolate place. Uh, the demons recognized Jesus uh, and as the Son of God. Uh, in fact, it even says that they, they led the man down to the shoreline where Jesus was coming ashore on the boat. Um, and they begged him uh, uh, not to send them away from that place. Um, and when Jesus asked the demon uh, what their name was, they called themselves legion. Now, legion uh, is a number that indicates 6,000. That was uh, the size of a, a Roman legion, normally, with 6,000 men. <clears throat> so Jesus did as the uh, spirits requested. Uh, he uh, cast them into that herd of pigs, uh, and then the pigs uh, ran down off the cliff and into the sea. Now the people, the inhabitants of uh, Gerasa uh, were mostly pagans. Uh, they were probably, um, they were probably uh, uh, some uh, uh, Greek uh, Syrians uh, because that's kind of that area where where this town was. Um, and one could probably gather from the fact that there was such a huge number of swine um, that they uh, uh, were pagans or they were uh, Gentiles because we know that Jews uh, didn't eat pork. Uh, in fact, even uh, uh, owning or uh, being around uh, pork was for a Jew, an Orthodox Jew of Jesus' day, a, a, a great sin. So, uh, so they had to be uh, pagan uh, and possibly, um, uh, I mean, Gentile pagan, possibly pagan uh, persons who were inhabiting that area. Uh, so, uh, Jesus arrives ashore, the man from the tomb who has the unclean spirits in him, uh, uh, which are really another way of talking about fallen angels or demons. Fallen angels uh, were, were originally created as part of the heavenly realm uh, that God created, uh, but they rebelled against God. Uh, and since they were, they were originally created uh, good by God, but uh, rebelled against him, uh, they were following the lead of Satan, or the devil, uh, who was originally an angel of light, or what we call archangel. Uh, and since uh, they were created for God to love and be loved, from the moment of their revolt, 
uh, they had nowhere to go uh, except to uh, inhabit uh, the earth. And so uh, those fallen angels uh, inhabit the earth in the form of uh, devils and demons. Uh, now, you can choose to believe that if you want or not, uh, but there is, a, there is a, that evil spirit uh, that is present in and amongst us at all times. Uh, we have to be aware of that. Uh, they, the angels are now uh, exist in an internal tor tormentation and, 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 and are bitterly alienated from God as a result of their free choice uh, influenced by their pride. Uh, what Christ does is he invites us to choose him freely out of love and to experience the joy and peace now uh, and in eternity that loving and living for him brings. So, so we, we are faced with this choice between choosing Christ, which is good, or choosing to live in, in, a, in the world uh, and be tempted uh, by evil in our lives. Uh, so the disastrous choice of the angels to reject uh, G, to reject God uh, really is what gives them their, their eternal damnation. Uh, and it, in a sense, brings upon us uh, uh, in a way of understanding and, and, and valuing the weight of our own moral choices to act accordingly. Uh, to God's word or to rebel uh, from God. Uh, sometimes we make poor choices uh, at times, perhaps uh, even placing our own souls in danger. Uh, and so Christ often speaks to the importance of conquering evil in our lives. And this is a demonstration of Jesus' power over uh, evil. Uh, spirits over Satan, even over a legion of uh, demons. Uh, clearly, it wasn't Jesus' intention to punish the owners of the swine uh, by the loss of their herd. Uh, rather, the death of the swine is a visible proof that the demons uh, were cast from the man into the swine. Uh, and uh, Jesus permitted the loss of that material good, the herd of swine, uh, because they were of less value than the spiritual good involved in curing the man who had been possessed. So we have this kind of dichotomy working here. Again, this battle, this struggle between good and evil, uh, evil being represented by uh, the devil, uh, uh, the legion of demons that possessed the man, uh, evil being represented by the pigs whom the Jews uh, viewed as unclean. Um, evil being represented by the pagans who reject Jesus, actually ask him to leave. And then on the other hand, we see Jesus uh, being the, the Son of God, having uh, great care for all of humanity, uh, reaching out to cure this demon-possessed man. And um, also, uh, we see him uh, sending that man away with a mission, like he always sends people once they become true believers in him. Uh, we're all sent with a mission to go and spread that good news. So there's two different attitudes that we see here. Uh, the, the, uh, the people of Gerazza, uh, beg Jesus to go away. Um, uh, they uh, had the Lord near them. Uh, they were able to see his divine power, but uh, their very self-centeredness uh, and, all, and all they could think about is the material damage, having suffered the loss of a herd, they don't realize the marvels that Jesus uh, has actually worked there in their presence. So uh, being very uh, materialistically minded, they ask Jesus to go away, uh, to leave them alone. Uh, so they reject him. Uh, the second attitude that we see is the one of the man who was freed from the demon possession. He wants to stay with Jesus. 
Uh, in fact, he wants to get in the boat and follow Jesus. Uh, but Jesus says that ultimately uh, he has to, he needs to stay and proclaim to that whole town, to his family, uh, to the ten cities of the Decropolis, uh, that uh, the good news, what had been done for him. Uh, and so those are the two uh, types of reactions that we see. Either people running towards the Lord, wanting to be with the Lord, or people rejecting the Lord. Um, as I said, the Decapolis, it, it's, a, it's a, a, a country of ten cities. Uh, the most famous ones are Damascus and Philadelphia uh, and, and uh, the uh, uh, Ger Azza that we hear today. Uh, there are several others. Uh, and they were located on the east of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, in the east of the Jordan, uh, and they were mainly inhabited by uh, Greeks uh, and Syrians. Uh, and it uh, was a Roman uh, territory that uh, was ruled over by the governor of Syria. So, uh, so when we look at this story, we see Jesus taking pity on the man who is overtaken by the legion of evil spirits. We see the destructive force of the demons uh, uh, have uh, even in the fact that they flee and destroy the herd of, fly, uh, of swine that they were requested to get cast into um, and uh, we as modern humans may find it difficult to believe in uh, the possession of a person by devils uh, but the story is really vivid describing this man who is living among the tombs, uh, it, that would have made him unclean uh, in the Jewish eye as well. Uh, so there's another thing that ties into that uncleanliness. Um, the pigs uh, hurl themselves into the sea, uh, and we might think, good riddance. Uh, but the reality is that the story and its meaning should be clear, and that is that Jesus has authority over unclean spirits. He casts them out, uh, and even the unclean animals are destroyed. Um, Jesus sets the spirits into that herd of pigs that throw themselves into the sea. Um, now, Jewish Christians might have taken a delight in this story or in this uh, scene uh, because uh, they saw several things happening. One was the man who was living uncleanly was cleansed. Uh, to the evil spirits uh, which they believe possessed the earth uh, were destroyed and also the unclean pigs were destroyed. Um, but, uh, but really it's just a, a way of describing uh, how Jesus has that power and authority uh, over evil. Um, he always places people before anything else. Uh, even before the law, or even before the powerful people of his time. Um, too often, we think of ourselves and our own happiness, uh, despite the fact that uh, selfishness uh, has never brought any happiness to anybody. Uh, selfishness is probably the deepest root of all unhappiness, uh, and it is definitely the root of all the seven deadly sins. And so we have to remember that, uh, that, that uh, Jesus is doing this out of love and compassion uh, for one of uh, God's children. Uh, so uh, probably the, the, the thing that we should take away from that is that uh, you know, we cannot be like ungodly people who uh, fill their uh, inner emptiness uh, by place, uh, by by uh, packing their lives with, uh, with money, with uh, distractions, uh, with addictions. But we have to allow Jesus to liberate us, to free us from, from the tombs uh, that we might be inhabiting in our own lives. So metaphorically, we are like this demon-possessed man. Uh, we have the, the sin in our life. And Jesus is there ready to cast that sin out. Uh, to totally uh, annihilate that sin, just as he did 
uh, the legions of demons. And all we have to do is to remember to, to yield to him for that. So, well, thank you for uh, tuning in today. And uh, tomorrow, or I'm sorry, next Tuesday, uh, we will be uh, picking up on Mark 5, uh, verses 21. Uh, and I don't know, we might break that one up because it actually goes through the end of the chapter. So I'll look at that and uh, we'll talk about that next week. So in the meantime, I hope that the Lord blesses you and, uh, and that you're staying safe. Have a great afternoon.